Hi, in this video, I'm going to give a very quick overview of how to do debugging of a Go program using Goland. So as you can see here, this is a very simple Go program where there is this main function and there's this struct uh, called point and we are just defining two points and simply calculating the distance between them and printing it. So I will show you the bare minimum of what it means to do debugging uh, in general and then I will, I will show you the flow of debugging and then I can show you like what extra you can do apart from the very basics of debugging. So usually when you run a program you just run it by the command like go run main.go. So similar thing you can do here only. So here there is this button if you click on it you see this run go build main.go so this does the same thing this will uh, do the go run main.go as well or basically build the code and run it but there is this option as well called debug so if you debug what happens is that depending on what kind of uh, checkpoints have you put it will run the program and stop at those checkpoints so you can define the checkpoints by just clicking here so Let's say in this case, I have put two checkpoints here. And if I click on it and just click on debug, go build, then the program starts and it stops at the first checkpoint, as you can see. So here there are a couple of things to notice. So there's this debugger option and there's this console. So console writes like, you know, if you have any logs, you can see those here the debugger section it shows you the stack the stack trace so as you can see this is you know a runtime main then main dot main so this is the main function if main function calls another function you will see another stack formed on top of main and uh, the, there are these buttons here i will just explain what these do so this is view breakpoints so you see all the breakpoints that you have defined. So in this case, I have two breakpoints defined, which are here. This will uh, stop the program and this uh, resumes the program. So it will just go, it will jump from breakpoints to breakpoints. So if I click on this once, it will go to the immediate next breakpoint, not the next uh, line of code. So if you just want to go to the next line of code, uh, these will come in handy. So this is step over which essentially goes to the next line. Uh, this is step into means it will get inside that function. Uh, so let's try this first step into. Uh, there is nothing to step into here. So it just went to the next function. But here in this line, if I do this, you know, step into, it goes to the distance function here because this uh, fmt.println that calls this distance function. And as you can see here, uh, here I can see this stack trace and this uh, stack of this distance function being formed on top of this main. So you can click through these to see what are the corresponding local values of the variables on the right side. So inside this distance function, I have p1, p2 defined as you can see here. Inside main as well, I have basically the same things defined. But if main had other variables, you would see them see them listed here as well. Okay, so now that I'm in the distance function, I can do you know step over, and that will just go to the next line of code, which is this return function. And here I can do step into because there are this math dot square root function, math dot power function. So let's see what happens if I do step into. I'm going inside math.power function. And yeah, these are the predefined functions in Go. So if I no longer want to, you know, get into much more deeper into this, um, I can just step out of it. So if I click on step out, I'm back to here. If I do step into again, I'm going to um, this POW function again because this is being called twice here. And I think if I do step into again, I should go into the square root function. Yeah, as you can see. If you don't do step out and if you just continue doing step over, you will eventually uh, end up where you started. So if I just do 
step over it just this return and i'm back to where i was and then if i do step over again i'm back to this uh, print uh, print statement and then i step over again and i'm at the end of main function and then then it just runs some uh, predefined function before it finishes uh, the main program and now you can see this main function is done you know and this distance is printed to be five which we were uh, yeah printing here distance so now there is no option to click on this uh, buttons because this debugger has been finished so this is a very brief overview of how you can put checkpoints and how you can uh, run a go code in the debug mode and do these uh, step in twos or step overs and uh, step outs uh, using goland so there are a couple more things i can uh, show so not every single time you may need to stop at these particular points so imp imagine there's a complex bit of code base and uh, you want your program to stop at a place only if certain conditions are met because those steps might be getting executed you know countless times during the overall flow of execution and you only want it to stop when you want it to stop so here if i do right click and uh, i have this option for condition so let's say so this is at p2 right so i can put a condition such as uh, let's say p1 dot x has to be greater than let's say 4.0 so this is a condition which means uh, the breakpoint the program or the debug program will stop at this breakpoint only if this condition is met so if i click on done and i click on this debug again it stops at p1 as expected but if i do this resume program it it just finishes because there is no other uh, checkpoints after that because this condition is not met but if i simply change this condition to let's say if it is greater than 1.0 and then run it again then it stops at p1 and if i click on resume program it indeed stops at p2 as well and then it finishes so this is how you can put conditions and instead of clicking here you can also like go here and uh, click on this button to do the debug and if you click here you have this edit configuration so you can configure your uh, debug program as well so the important thing to notice here is this um, program argument so you can give the uh, so currently my program does not accept any you know flags or arguments but you can predefine those here as well before running and you can also like you know uh, uncheck this enabled button then what it does is that it is simply disabled for now but it will keep it in its memory so you can always go to this view breakpoints option and see uh, which ones are actually enabled and which ones are just temporarily disabled and if you click on this mute breakpoints all the breakpoints will be uh, muted so if you mute it and then the then run the debug program then uh, none of the breakpoints will work okay so this is a very brief overview of uh, how you can debug a go program using goland if you have any questions or comments then feel free to um, write it in the comment section thank you